Keeping a general consideration of the skeletal trauma in view, X-rays are the basic modalities and baseline modalities to pick the fractures. Uh, so on the X-rays, two orthogonal images and views are required. AP and lateral view to pick the exact position of the fracture and it must also be considered that it is poor at soft tissue assessment you cannot uh, assess the soft tissues on any x-rays at length for that purpose you need to have the MRI on the radiograph if uh, normal fat pads or fat plants are displaced or these fat pads are obliterated uh, this can be a clear clue to an acute fracture hematoma or sometime it may happen because of the joint distension. So in both conditions the normal fat plants would be displaced or it may be obliterated. Lipohemarthrosis is a condition in which there is fat and blood can be seen within the joint space. Uh, so because of this lipohemarthrosis the joint distension could be seen and uh, it would be in clear evidence for intra-articular fracture. For the evaluation and assessment of the skeletal trauma after the x-ray, the another radiological investigations can be used which is called as scintigraphy. In scintigraphy, the radioisotope is used and which can be taken up by the osteoblastic activity. If there is any osteoblastic activity, the scintigraphy will pick up and there will be increased uptake of radioisotope. So it will help us to visualize whether there is fracture somewhere or inflammatory process going on or sometime this uptake would be either caused by any of the metastatic deposits. So for all these three purposes the scintigraphy can be used. It should also be kept in mind that scintigraphy modality is much more sensitive than the x-rays. So x-ray cannot pick all these information. So for the scintigraphy and this radioisotope uptake is concerned, it took a lot more information and give us all these information at length. Next comes the another modality which is called as computerized tomography or simply called as CT scan. It can be contrast enhanced or it can be non-contrast enhanced. Uh, so far the fracture and trauma is concerned usually non-contrast enhanced CT is used. However, so far the small fractures are concerned it may not be detected due to volume averaging. Otherwise, excellent modality you can pick all the uh, skeletal trauma abnormalities on the CT images. The importance of MRI in relation to general consideration of uh, skeletal trauma cannot be ignored because it is a very important uh, modality and this is ideal for assessing the ligaments, the tendons, the cartilage, and muscles abnormalities whenever there is trauma there will be rupture or tear of the ligaments tendons cartilage and muscles which can be easily picked on MRI on MRI images normal tendons and ligaments are devoid of uh, signal on all routine pulse sequences sprains and tears uh, increases their water contents especially on T2 weighted images high SI uh, fat suppressed uh, sequences increase the conspicuity of any increased signals. Uh, this is what you can appreciate on the MRI. On MRI, tendinitis leads to tendon enlargement and increase intratendinous signal intensity. So far the partial tear is concerned. This may be seen as a irregularity within the tendon shape and associated with high SI on T2 weighted images and complete tear uh, the tendon uh, would be seen as a discontinuous absent or unrecognizable and this can be appreciated on the MRI images. MRI is also very useful modality for the ligamentous injury. Uh, 
in grade 1 injury uh, that is considered as a mild sprain so you will appreciate abnormally increased SI around an otherwise normal appearing ligament. So for grade 2 injury is concerned it is called as severe sprain in that case abnormal thickening with abnormal SI within the ligament can be seen and in grade 3 injury which is called as complete disruptions of the ligament a total disrupted ligament would be seen on MRI. The importance of ultrasound imaging in skeleton trauma cannot be ignored as it shows the information regarding, regarding the tendons. It also gives information regarding the ligaments and also help us to evaluate the muscles. For that purpose, a high transducer can be, can be used with a high frequency probe to analyze all the internal structures of the tendon, their fibrillar patterns the ligamentous fibrillary pattern and muscles as well. So beside this you can appreciate intramuscular hematoma or collection either during the uh, traumatic status or sometime in post traumatic evolution. It is important and quite easy imaging to rule out all these abnormalities. On the basis of ultrasound imaging, tendinitis is defined as increased tendon thickening. The normal thickness of the tendon or ligament would be increased as compared to the uh, other side. The second uh, important finding would be altered ecogenicity. Normally, you can appreciate uh, very fine, smooth, regular fibrillar pattern on the ultrasound imaging and uh, with normal ecogenicity. So this ecogenic pattern would be disturbed in case of uh, tendinitis. The third important point is when you put the Doppler signal on, you might appreciate vascularity within the tendon or ligament or surrounding or around the tendon or the ligament. So it will show uh, features of inflammation. So these three uh, points can be easily picked on high resolution ultrasound imaging. Ultrasound imaging is very reliable imaging to pick the calcification uh, within the tendon or ligament. Especially it is used for the tendon and that termed as a calcific tendinopathy. It happens to be very pa painful. On the ultrasound imaging you will find either small, tiny or punctate. It depends upon the uh, previous trauma. It depends upon the duration. So the calcification and the calcium will start depositing within the previous traumatic area and it will give rise to a solid calcification. So uh, this can be easily picked on the ultrasound imaging and that would be termed at calcific tendinopathy especially seen post-traumatically and especially seen in senile patients, in elderly patients and it give rise to severe pain and a range of movement would be uh, uh, difficult and sometime uh, there will be restricted movements on the area so this can be easily seen on the ultrasound imaging Tears can be picked confidently on ultrasound imaging and tear can be either partial tear or complete tear and tear can also be either interstitial tear or it may be uh, near to the articular surface uh, articular tear or sometime it near to the bursal surface or bursal tear. So far the ultrasonic findings are concerned you will see focal hypoequic area with partial discontinuation or disruption of fibrillar pattern. So a focal hypoequic area would be seen it would show that there is some partial disruption of the fibrillar pattern is there and that would be considered as a partial tear and uh, it depends upon the location as I mentioned either it may be interstitial or if near to the uh, surface or bursal area so you can label it as a uh, uh, near the bursal or if it is around the articular surface so at intra or at articular level so it depends upon the site uh, so tear can be easily picked on the ultrasound imaging very confidently
complete tear is defined as complete disruption of fibrillar pattern there will be discontinuity of the fibrillar pattern on the ultrasound imaging so you must be very careful while you are differentiating between the partial tear and the complete tear in the complete tear you have to look for the different angles and different views so that you should confirm that whether it is complete or partial tear in terms of partial tear you must be careful for an isotrophy an isotrophy is when the uh, ultrasound beam does not reach or uh, it is not perpendicular to the uh, uh, scan structure so it will give rise to an impression of hypoequic area which would be considered as a tear so for these two things there are certain limitation which can be easily corrected uh, with the passage of time and with practice as well uh, ultrasound modality is a confident modality to pick all these abnormalities of related to skeletal uh, skeletal trauma especially tendons and uh, ligaments tear partial or uh, complete tears you can confidently pick on the ultrasound imaging discontinuity of the fibrillar pattern either completely or incompletely is seen within the substance uh, in the lumen of the tendon or ligament would be considered an interstitial tear. Interstitial tear means that would be in the center part of either the tendon or the ligament. This would be considered as an interstitial tear. Interstitial tear usually this happens to be a partial tear because it does not approach to the end of the or to the entire length of the ligament or entire length of the tendon or it does not approach the surface so that's why it is very important but related to this interstitial tear you must be careful for the anisotrophy anisotrophy is a condition where the ultrasound beam does not reach directly or perpendicular to the fibrillar pattern as a result you will see hypoequic area on the skin on the screen and it will mimic as a tear which would not be a true tear that's why you have to look for the longitudinal uh, view and the transverse view as well in both axes it would be clear Pathological fractures are those where substantially less force is required to cause a fracture in a weakened bone. This means that the bone would already be already be weakened. It would be previously uh, non-healthy bone. So with limited or minimal ill set, it will get injured and that would be considered as pathological fracture. One of the example of the pathological fracture is banana fracture and this pathological fractures tend to be oriented transversely within the long bone especially this banana fracture you can appreciate on the long bones and uh, this would be a transverse fracture on this radiograph of hip joint you can appreciate that this bone has a banana fracture this is actually a transverse fracture and you can clearly see that the bone is already osteopenic the patient is in a senile stage so this uh, bone shows a degree of osteopenia less calcification less calcium as a result this uh, fracture ensues and this fracture would be considered as a banana fracture this is a type of pathological fracture which is caused by many reasons including metastatic deposits especially in senile patient or where the patient is already having any uh, malignant disease uh, this may be caused by directly benign tumors within the within the bone or we can call it a bone tumor like inchondromas or solitary bone cysts pagets is uh, pagets is a disease where a lot many fractures can be seen so in paget disease there is likely to have the banana fractures and renal osteodystrophy this is the problem of the bones related to the kidneys which is called as renal osteodystrophy so already existing disease would be the renal and the kidney and as a result the fracture will occur and that would be a banana fracture osteogenesis imperfecta is already congenital abnormality of the bone so it's mean in these all uh, conditions the bone will already be 
having some abnormality and secondary to that abnormality the fracture will occur and that would be considered as pathological fracture. So therefore keep in mind whether patient having some other illnesses or not. If there is certain illnesses so it means this fracture is secondary to that illness so it would be considered as pathological fracture. Next comes stress fracture. It is also called as fatigue fracture. Uh, this uh, occurs due to chronic repetitive trauma on normal bone. The bone would be normal but there would be repetitive trauma on the same center. The center of the trauma would be the same. Uh, so what you can appreciate on the, uh, on the x-ray is a subtle periosteal reaction or a transfer band or a linear sclerotic or sclerosis may be seen that would take uh, to develop uh, one to two weeks after the onset of the symptoms. So before the after the symptoms uh, it will take uh, one to two weeks and after that on the radiograph you will be able to appreciate these uh, appearances may be periosteal reaction or maybe a transverse band of uh, linear sclerosis would be visible that would be considered as fatigue fracture. This is the left foot radiograph and on this radiograph all the bones are clearly visible. Uh, on this image you can appreciate the second uh, metatarsal bone having a slight sclerotic line within the shaft of the second metatarsal. So this sclerotic line suggestive of stress fracture and uh, this patient uh, was athlete and it was a long runner. Especially this type of a fracture is also called as march fracture. Those who are doing the long march, those who are doing marathon races or those who are athletes or they are long runner. So you will be able to appreciate that particularly on that side. So this is a good example of a stress fracture. Common sites for the stress fractures or fatigue fractures are metatarsal shafts and which you have already seen the image and this metatarsal shaft fracture is known as March uh, uh, fracture as well. It can also be seen in pubic remi and femoral neck especially those who are uh, working uh, for long hours and, and working as a, in a standing postures, pubic remi as well. Tibial and tubular shaft are also very common for those who are athletes or those who are standing for quite a long time. Calcaneal tuberosity fracture are those who are um, I mean working in the army or in the police department especially when they are uh, uh, usually hitting their calcaneal area to the ground as a I mean um, as, as I mean like uh, in their own professional field we can call it salute you know when they do the salute to the higher officials and they keep on doing it constantly and regularly so in those uh, scouts or those candidates you will see there will be calcaneal tuberosity uh, stress fracture which is very common in in, in these uh, i mean professions insufficiency fracture is a fracture uh, which is caused by normal activities on on abnormal bone it means the bone would be already abnormal and uh, as uh, this is a is a type of pathological fracture where the bone is abnormal especially this could be seen in osteopenic bone in elderly because of the reduced calcium level the osteopenia uh, uh, causes the fragility of the bone as a result the fracture infuses so this is a type of pathological fracture and uh, this is called as insufficiency fracture because uh, this uh, bone no longer maintain or can bear the normal activity even so therefore the fracture take place this is called as insufficiency fracture radiological imaging can also be used to assess the joint uh, prosthesis so uh, how you can pick the joint prosthesis if it is loose so the one thing is they will be widening radiolucency either the bone cement or prosthetic uh, bone interface there is a interface between the normal bone and the prosthesis bone so this should have been less than two millimeter if it is more than two millimeter it would be considered as joint prosthetic loosening. Uh, 
the second thing is if there is a prosthetic migration sometime it deviate or it migrate from its normal anatomical location so this can be easily picked and this would be the joint prosthesis loosening and the third thing is indirect sign this is periosteal reaction if there is periosteal reaction where the prosthetic has been placed so it shows that this prosthetic has been loosed and uh, further workup would be needed so these are all the common consideration you have to keep in mind while you are uh, looking for the skeleton trauma and this would be a general consideration so you must keep all these points in view while you are reporting or you are looking for any x-rays in the department of the trauma here a few images has been chosen to give you a clear identification of the joint prosthetic loosening and here you can appreciate that there is a widening of the radiolucency between the interface of the prosthesis bone and the surrounding area so this shows that the joint uh, prosthetic has been loose so this is look at these uh, arrow black arrows indicating the small radiolucent area around all these prosthetic metallic structures so you can appreciate this is a one and major sign of uh, prosthetic loosening this radiograph of the shoulder joint prosthesis has been selected to show you the example of the prosthetic migration look for the head uh, which would have been in its own cavity but uh, it is slightly removed it is diverted from and it has been migrated from its own anatomical location so this is the example of uh, the prosthetic migration so you have to look for the prosthetic migration uh, on the x-rays or uh, whatever the features you are looking here the feature which shows you that it is a prosthetic migration this is another example of the prosthetic uh, joint and uh, it shows some indirect signs of the loosening here you can appreciate these white arrow are uh, indicating the pros uh, periosteal reaction this periosteal reaction uh, may be because of certain reasons sometime uh, there, there is some rays uh, periosteal reactions and there are so many other types codman triangles and many more but today here we are just discussing about the way it looks when there is any prosthesis prosthesis joint so because of this prosthesis as it is a foreign body the bone react or uh, sometime because of its loosening that the joint has been loose so because of that there will be periosteal reaction which can be picked on the radiograph and after this they can be managed properly there are uh, multiple points to describe the fracture to start with you have to look for the location and the location is very important when you are writing the report and looking on the x-ray you have to look whether this fracture is in the proximal part of a bone or in the middle part of a bone or a distal part of the bone so this you have to mention in terms of or in relation to any other bone or maybe in relation to the shaft if it is in relation to the shaft so just explain it whether it is proximal or it is distal this is the first most important point you have to look for in terms of explaining the fracture and especially its location this radiograph has been chosen this is a lower leg radiograph which is explaining the fracture of the tibia here you can appreciate a well defined fracture but that is in the middle so it is the shaft fracture it is the middle fracture so it explain beautifully the location of the fracture another example of the explanation of the location of the fracture here you can appreciate this is the radiograph this is the femur and the femur radiograph shows fracture that is also the shaft fracture the middle fracture so first of all you have to look for the location where the fracture is so in terms of location this is the middle fracture and middle fracture of the uh, femur bone so look at this quite easily can be easily picked
this is another radiograph you have already seen this uh, radiograph uh, in the discussion of the pathological fracture and especially an insufficient fracture but uh, here the point of uh, um, i mean uh, learning is that uh, look for the location this is a proximal fracture so here is a proximal femoral fracture so in the previous images you have seen the mid um, shape fracture and this is a proximal fracture so the proximal would be on the proximal end of the bone and the distal would be at the distal end of the bone so this is a proximal femur fracture which is visible on this radiograph with regard to fracture descriptions after location the next comes you have to look for whether the fracture is complete or incomplete a fracture extending across the full width of the bone would be considered as a complete fracture this is a mature skeleton and this is a radiograph of the left upper arm and it's showing fracture of the humerus look that this fracture is completely uh, separated from the uh, in the mid from the proximal and the distal area so this is called as a complete fracture no continuity between these uh, this bone has been left so it is completely uh, discontinued and this is a complete fracture fracture may also be incomplete and this incomplete fracture can be seen in patriotic population and the best example is green strict fracture here this is a, a radiograph of a child a premature skeleton and on that you can appreciate there is radius and ulna visible because of the compression from the one side this bone is showing a green streak fracture so here you can see uh, while defining the green streak fracture or incomplete fracture partially uh, the substance of the bones would be partially connected and partially disconnected it would not be totally separated from each other either the proximal or the part where the compression has been made uh, you will see slightly disruption and that would be considered as a uh, incomplete fracture and this is usually seen in uh, childhood or in pediatric population and that is a great example the great example is green streak fracture in terms of its appearances a fracture may be either transverse or oblique or it may be spiral even so you have to look after the location of the fracture and completeliness and incompleteliness of the fracture you must comment on whether it is transverse oblique or spiral fracture in this mature skeleton radiograph of the lower leg you can appreciate the uh, fracture of the tibia and this fracture is transverse fracture look at this is a complete fracture the second thing is this is a midline fracture and the third thing is this is a transverse fracture because a transverse line has been drawn and you can appreciate this is a transverse fracture This is a radiograph of a mature skeleton and the right uh, leg shows a fracture line and this fracture line is oblique fracture line oblique fractures of the tibia so this tibial fracture uh, it, it can be easily picked on this radiograph so now explain that its site it is a uh, I mean proxy it, it's, it's a distal fracture this is oblique fracture and this is complete fracture so three categories three information can be given on the radiograph you have mentioned the location you have mentioned also its completeliness and incompleteliness and you have also mentioned that this is an oblique fracture after the transverse and oblique fracture the next comes spiral fracture spiral fracture is defined as the bone rotates uh, on its axis 
so it's no longer maintain the anatomical orientation and continuation between each other so these both fragments become rotate on its uh, axis so that would be called as spiral fracture here on this radiograph of the lower extremity especially of femur you can appreciate this is a clear example of spiral fracture so this is a spiral fracture this is a mid uh, mi middle fracture and the third thing is this is a complete fracture destruction is a type of fracture specially seen in uh, spinal areas and particularly in the posterior elements specially uh, can be seen in the cervical area and that fracture is called as hangman fracture here on this image you can see that the posterior element has been aparted from each other this is a clear example of the destruction and uh, you can appreciate that the posterior element would be detached there will be fracture in the posterior element and uh, that's, that cause because th this is because of the pulling force so when it is caused by the pulling force so distra distraction may occur so that example is clearly seen here you can appreciate that the posterior element has been separated however the disc anterior disc and anterior cortical margins of the disc are still in place but only the posterior uh, elements uh, has been detached so this is an example of a distraction After the distraction, uh, you should have to look for whether the bone is impacted or these are overriding. These two are a very clear uh, phenomena here on this image. This is the image of, uh, uh, of the lower extremity where you can appreciate the femur and this is a multiple fracture and here you can see both phenomena here. The one is uh, that is impaction and another uh, is you can see overriding see the bone has been uh, impacted with each other and they are overrided so you have to comment on that uh, on this type of a fractures as well while in uh, skeletal trauma section in describing the fracture you have also looked for whether there is dislocation or not dislocation uh, is defined as the articular surfaces would be completely separated so this is a chest radiograph and on this chest radiograph you can appreciate the humerus and this is the left humerus the clavicle is visible uh, the posterior uh, scapular area is visible L ribs are clearly visible so far the location of the head of the uh, humerus is concerned in relation to its cavity so it is displaced so there are three types of dislocation um, rather four i would say here so anterior uh, and posterior and superior and inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint so this is one of the example so this is the example of the dislocation this is a, another a chest uh, shoulder radiograph of a mature skeleton and here you can appreciate that the widening of the glenohumeral joint space because of the uh, dislocation so this is again shoulder joint dislocation in the previous image you could see that was a uh, inferior dislocation here you can appreciate that this is an anterior dislocation so there is certain phenomena to explain that on the uh, on the on the radiograph whether it is anterior or posterior or superior or inferior there are certain phenomena and sick hell and many other uh, information you can pick on the radiograph so this was an example of the dislocation after confirming the dislocation you should have to look for the another phenomena as well which is called a subluxation subluxation uh, there will be a some partial contact between the articular surfaces here you can appreciate uh, this is an example of the subluxation 
this is a skeleton of the mature hand and on this mature hand you can appreciate that uh, some of the bones has been subluxed, subluxed especially that is a, a distal joint so distal joint has been subluxed uh, subluxation mean there there will be still partially contact between the articular surface that would not be centrally this would be just on the side but still some contact you will be able to find so then you would have to write word as a subluxation Evulsion fracture. Evulsion fracture is defined as uh, there would be a separation of the bone fragments at the ligament or tendinous attachment site or uh, it is usually seen in transverse fractures. This is the radiograph of the hand and here you can appreciate an example of the evulsion fracture and especially where the flexor tendons were attached and because of that excessive pressure and because of the evulsion small portion of the bone has been detached from the from the bone from the major bone so that is a small segment can be easily seen here this is an example of the evulsion fracture osteochondral fracture can be defined as that there would be disruption of the articular cartilage and underlying subchondral bone um, so a fragment a fracture fragment can become a joint loose body so you will be able to appreciate this would become a, a loose body within the joint so this would be example of osteochondral fracture this is actually a fracture of the articular cartilage not the bone itself so because of the articular uh, cartilage articular cartilage will be dropped uh, or will start uh, floating within the fluid within the uh, joint fluid so this would be an example of the osteochondral fracture this would be sometimes seen as a loose body is there and many of the clinician would uh, uh, report it as a loose bodies but you have to pay attention for the osteochondral fracture as well and this is an example of the osteochondral fracture the common site for the osteochondral uh, uh, a fracture would be considered as femoral condyles uh, patella is a common as you can see on this image uh, there will be a, a taller dome as well the fracture of the taller dome community fracture is a type of fracture where there will be more than two separate bones fragments here on this radiograph this is a radiograph of a mature skeleton of the lower extremity of the lower leg and uh, uh, AP and lateral view has been shown here and you can appreciate the fracture of both uh, tibia and fabula so this tibia and fabula fracture can be seen and these both are the spiral fracture these both are the uh, distal fracture these both are the community fracture and you can get all these information on this radiograph so this is a beautiful example of the community fracture when there is multiple fragments uh, you would have to share when the multiple bone or in other words you can say more than two bones are involved with with fragments so that would be called as a community fracture butterfly fragment uh, we are a large a triangular fragment usually oriented uh, along the long axis of the bone would be called as a butterfly fragment with respect to a butterfly fragment the proximal fragment is considered the point of reference when describing the displacement of a distal fragment uh, anterior posterior medial or lateral for example a one shaft with medial displacement uh, angulation of the long axis of the distal fragment relative to the proximal fragment mean you have to explain whether it is varus or it is vulgus and the second thing is so far butterfly fragment is concerned it would be associated with soft tissue injuries as well
in the setting of uh, skeletal trauma and its general considerations while looking for the fracture and fracture descriptions you have to focus on the joint effusions as well for the joint effusions uh, x-rays are the modality which can also explain like i mentioned earlier there will be a disruption or obliterations of the fat pad on simple x-rays you can pick whether there is a joint effusion or not the second modality is the ct scan and on the ct images you can appreciate the joint effusion as well whether it is a small amount or a large amount or full uh, in uh, diameter of the joint is involved mri is the very important and uh, informative here on this image you can appreciate in front of the joint this is the knee joint and you can appreciate a joint knee joint effusion so this effusion can be easily picked you can also look for whether there is some contents within it whether there is some uh, uh, blood contents or any other material is in there or any mucinous content so it will also explain you everything at depth so the mri is the uh, I mean gold standard for the joint effusion the importance of the ultrasound uh, in relation to joint effusion cannot be ignored because this is the first primary modality and easily available modality you can just put the probe on the joint and appreciate whether there is fluid within within it or not or even you can appreciate whether there is some intraluminal content within it or not and beside this it can uh, also roughly give you an idea of uh, attached ligaments or uh, attendance whether there is any disruption whether there is partial tear or complete tear so in one go you can immediately pick all these information including the tendon or the joints or ligaments injury or uh, the fluid contents where there is low level internal echoes there or whether there is some internal loose bodies or there may be a sign of uh, cartilage uh, uh, fracture so you can appreciate these things uh, provided that if you have a very sophisticated equipments and the second thing you have already seen some of the images and the patients uh, in uh, pr previously so it's mean your practice uh, will help you to identify all these things clearly on the ultrasound modality lipoheme arthrosis is a term uh, which explain that there is a fat fluid level within the joint so that is uh, commonly seen post-traumatic and this is uh, most of the time uh, released by uh, bone marrow fat within the lumen so this is termed as lipoheme arthrosis lipo mean fat and he mean blood and arthrosis mean the joint so within the joint if the fluid has fat fluid level this would be called as a fat fluid level uh, or lipoheme arthrosis. Uh, it usually uh, shows that there is some in, uh, serious, in fact, a serious uh, fracture which is leading or uh, leaking of the bone marrow into the joint cavity. Uh, this can uh, be seen as an on a horizontal or a lateral view of the knee, and uh, it can also be seen within the shoulder as well. But the one thing very important that as I mentioned that on you can you can appreciate on the radiographs you can also appreciate this on the MRI you can also appreciate pick this on the CT images uh, all these takes time and also you know there is a hazards of radiations even but the one very quick uh, modality is ultrasound it's non-invasive and there is no uh, I mean hazards of radiation you can and it's readily available. On the ultrasound imaging you just put the probe on and on the probe the one thing you can appreciate would be the joint effusion and the second thing the content within the joint effusion so the joint effusion will explain uh, at length that uh, within the fluid is there any uh, blood products uh, floating or is there any loose body or there is any fat contents or there is any infective content so it you can be you will be able to exclude the infective arthritis or infective contents or purulating purulative uh, abnormalities or 
lipohema arthrosis so all these things can be easily picked on the uh, ultrasound imaging in uh, related to skeletal trauma so with respect to skeletal trauma in its general consideration we have discussed at length the importance of the x-rays and where we will use the scintigraphy the ct scan and mri importance has already been discussed at length we have also discussed uh, how you will be able to pick the tendinitis and ligamentous injuries and tears on the MRI. Beside this, uh, we have also discussed about the non-invasive method, easily and quickly available method that is uh, ultrasound, which is uh, we quite confidently use in a trauma section to pick all these abnormality related to the ligament, tendons, muscles, hematomas tendinitis, tears, partial tears or complete tears. Then uh, we discussed about the different uh, fractures uh, in, in with respect to general consideration like how we will call it as a pathological fracture if it is pathological fracture so how will appear if it is banana fracture or uh, there is a stress fracture or fatigue fractures or I mean we have also discussed about the common sites of these stress fractures uh, especially martial fractures has been discussed at length which you can see in the um, I mean um, uh, like athletes and those who are long runners uh, insufficient fracture insufficiency fractures has already been discussed joint prosthetic which is very important one those who have uh, got their artificial knees and knee replacements and other organ uh, areas replacement so for that we have also discussed the joint prosthesis loosening how it will appear with respect to particularly fracture descriptions we mentioned about the location also discuss about whether it is open or closed uh, whether you have to look for whether it is complete fracture or incomplete then look for its uh, appearances whether it is transverse fracture or oblique fracture or spiral fracture then we have also discussed about whether it is distraction or it is impaction or it is overriding joint dislocation has already been discussed and on certain images uh, you you could pick the dislocation as well as particularly the shoulder joint subluxation has already been discussed a beautiful examples of ex evolution fractures uh, has also shown to you that how it will appear on the images osteochondral fracture has also been discussed and shown you that if the cartilage or articular cartilage is fracture so you will have to give the word of osteochondral fracture community fracture has already been shown beautifully explained and uh, i'm sure it is these images are unforgettable it would stay in your mind butterfly fragment has been discussed as well so you can appreciate the butterfly fragment and in relation to its anterior posterior medial and lateral angle with the shift has also shown to you uh, at the end i have discussed about the joint effusions and the modalities you can use for the joint effusion in particular and uh, i have just thrown light on the importance of the ultrasonography being uh, non-invasive being readily available and you don't need to wait for long and long to get the appointment for and you can within a week or two you can easily get the uh, the appointment and um, they can easily pick the joint effusion if there is any and then another important uh, uh, beneficial point for the ultrasound diagnosis is that you can uh, pick that whether there is some infective products within that or there is any loose body which could be easily uh, visible or which type of uh, infection is going on even you can pick the type of the arthritis whether it is infective arthritis or either psoriatic arthritis or it is gouty arthritis so these information can be easily picked up on the ultrasound imaging so next uh, at the end uh, i have discussed about the lipoheme arthrosis where there is a, a suspicious of uh, some uh, um, a fracture from where the bone marrow started leaking and 
um, entering into the joint spaces and that uh, that is a particular that particular term we use that is lipohemarthrosis this particular lipohemarthrosis can be quite confidently pick on the ultrasound imaging so whether it is in the shoulder joint or it is in the knee joint you can pick all that information quite confidently so this was all about the uh, skeletal trauma in which we have discussed about the general consideration point and uh, particularly uh, the fracture point as well so how you will describe the fractures in terms of its all relation we have discussed each and everything hopefully this would be a very useful video for you and it will benefit you